What's up, everybody out there in quarantine land? This is your host of the One Stone Dude podcast, Ryan Castle, and I'm talking to you about the Anchor app today. That's what this podcast has come to you from. There are so many advantages to this app, it's hard to explain, but if you haven't heard about the Anchor app, it's the easiest way to make a podcast, so let me explain real quick. It's free. Then you have your creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor will then distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. So, go to the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And keep your First Amendment rights going. Like 180 of them have freedom. All right. And yeah, you, uh, sorority girl. Just in case you accidentally wander into a voting booth one day, there's some things you should know. And one of them is there is absolutely no evidence to support the statement that we're the greatest country in the world. We're seventh in literacy, 27th in math, 22nd in science, 49th in life expectancy, 178th in infant mortality, third in median household income, number four in labor force, and number four in exports. We lead the world in only three categories. Number of incarcerated citizens per capita, number of adults who believe angels are real, and defense spending, where we spend more than the next 26 countries combined, 25 of whom are allies. Now, none of this is the fault of a 20-year-old college student, but you nonetheless are, without a doubt, a member of the worst period, generation period ever, period. So when you ask what makes us the greatest country in the world, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yosemite? sure used to be. We stood up for what was right. We fought for moral reasons. We passed laws, struck down laws for moral reasons. We waged wars on poverty, not poor people. We sacrificed. We cared about our neighbors. We put our money where our mouths were, and we never beat our chest. We built great big things, made ungodly technological advances, explored the universe, cured diseases, and we cultivated the world's greatest artists and the world's greatest economy. We reached for the stars, acted like men. We aspired to intelligence. We didn't belittle it. It didn't make us feel inferior. We didn't identify ourselves by who we voted for in the last election, and we didn't didn't scare so easy. We were able to be all these things and do all these things because we were informed by great men, men who were revered. First step in solving any problem is recognizing there is one. America is not the greatest country in the world anymore. Enough? Welcome back, everyone, to the One Stone Dude Podcast. This is your host, Ryan Castle. On the line with, <laughs> on the line with me, uh, hey, what's your call sign name? Because I forgot. I know your real name. But what's your call uh, sign? It's, uh, it's uh, Jason Oblivion. Okay, so we got Jason Oblivion with us on the line. He was on the third show, which was the second highest rated show that I've had so far. And uh, we got to talking, and he brought up a bunch of interesting topics, basically revolving around one topic. But I think it needed to be heard by whoever's listening to this, because it's a different perspective on what you're seeing in the news. And it's definitely a perspective that is much needed and uh, well-earned. So with that, I will give you Mr. Oblivion 
Um, let's talk about Black Lives Matter. Um, All right. So you yeah, be- go, go you ahead. believe you believe that Black Lives Matter is um, it's different than what it's portraying itself to be. You want to explain that for me? All right. So man, I'm hoping I, I can I can reencompass because because uh, Castle called me uh, just to shoot the shit. He's like, "Why the fuck are we recording this shit?" Seriously. So um, okay, look. I'm I'm a half black man, all right. So I grew up in um, in Michigan. I'm a biracial individual, but you know it's like Black Lives Matter, and so th- this this is the hot topic right now in the country. And I think that I can talk from both perspectives, you right? Know, be a you know a half black, half white. And do I agree that Black Lives Matter? Yes, I do. I agree with that a hundred percent. Do I agree with what happened to George Floyd? No, I don't. I don't think he deserved to die the way he did at the hands of that cop in, in uh, Minneapolis. But I think there's a lot of stuff that the media doesn't cover that kind of pisses me off. And there's a lot of stuff that um, I feel like the media cherry picks things because oh, they the absolutely. media wants. Well, yeah, because the media wants to sit here and start this this fucking race war. Now, do I agree with the with the movement of Black Lives Matter? Let's look at the movement of Black Lives Matter. All right, okay. Let, let's look at just that movement right there with that organization to begin with. Okay, so they espouse that Black Lives Matter because black people are being killed at the hand of cops twenty four seven, three sixty five, you know, all day long. Okay, that's not true because last year, if you go to the Washington Post. There was nine black killings of unarmed suspects out of 750 interactions, I believe, just uh, just just like just with like black black people, you know, like with weapons. Okay, so you have not you have nine shootings of unarmed of unarmed black people, but what they don't count is the fact that they had knives, they were charging people, they had guns, and they were firing them off. But the thing is, is that as a black person in America, and, I, and I've lived all over the place, okay, I've had interactions with cops, white cops, black cops, Mexican cops, whatever. I don't think any Asian cops. But, that, but that's, that's beside the point. Right. But the thing is, is that if you're committing crimes and you're doing some crazy shit, all right, look, if the cops approach you, okay, you got caught. All right, so don't be a bitch. If you're going to do the crime, do the time. But the thing is, is that you got caught, and now the officer wants to put you in handcuffs. And so what happens? People get crazy. Right. Now, if you look, if you look at, at, the, at the statistics, I believe that the black statistics in America is 13% black people. But then they also commit 48% of the crimes. Wow. So if you're going to sit here and tell me that, oh, well, blacks are, you know, targeted more, you know, than white people or even like, you know, Mexican people or Hispanic people, whatever you want to call it. Well, listen, the fact of the matter is, is there's a lot of violent crime in the black community. And so the thing is, is that I think that maybe the black community should take a look at itself as far as, I don't know, education, family structure. Family structure is the big one because, look, as a black man, son of a single mom who's a white woman, I had a black dad. Where the fuck was my black dad? Nowhere to be found. And that and that's found specifically in the black community. It's found it's found there a lot. You don't see that in the Asian community. You don't see that in the Hispanic community. You don't see that in the in the white community. So first of all, there's a breakdown of, of the freaking family structure in the black community. So what happens when you have a young, impressionable black man or a black or a black woman without a dad? Well, they get pissed off and confused. And so what do they do? They fall into gangs. And so then what, what do they get taught by gangs? Well, we're going to start doing violent shit. We're going to start running drugs, stealing drugs, whatever. And so, you know, this whole Black Lives Matter thing, okay, I get it. You don't like getting hit up by the cops. It's fine. But the thing is, is that you fucking idiot in the black community right now, you're 
burning down your own fucking community because you're pissed off at one stupid sociopathic white cop that put his neck on some poor bastard's ass in Minnesota. Now we're going to burn the whole fucking country down. I'm trying to figure out how the fuck that makes sense. I'm trying to figure out how the hell you're going to get your message out if you feel like you're being, you know, used and abused by the white man. How, how is that? How is that going to? How is that going to change anyone's mind? It doesn't. It just makes you look like the fucking animals that you are. Now I have to. Because, I have to interrupt you for a second. I, I got a report from Philadelphia about the people that are doing the burning and looting, and from what I was told, it was mainly white people. Oh, no, I, I've seen that. Like college kids that. and shit. No, I've seen that. But see, the thing is, is that the like the black protesters, you know, that are that are protesting, are they standing up to the looters? I don't see you guys doing it. And why is it the media covering that shit? Because yeah. they don't want you to see it. They don't want you to see it, the fact that you're all being used. As a matter of fact, if you want to talk about Black Lives Matter, black lives are being scapegoated right now. You're being oh, yeah. Butt. Yeah, I totally agree with you. You know? So, you know, but the thing is, too, it's like, if you look at Black Lives Matter, if Black Lives truly matter, what happened to David Dorn? Right. What what what, what happened to his life in, um, in Nevada? The right. retired police chief that was trying to protect his friend's pawn shop, he was shot in the back of the head by another black person. How come that shit took a week and a half to make the media? Wow. I didn't even realize it took that long. Why did that happen? You know, if Black Lives Matter, what happened to the freaking couple that was trying to protect their store in Manhattan, New York, 60, 70 years old? They were beat to death by, you know, by a bunch of black thugs. Why, why, why Why did their lives not matter? There have been seven cops so far in the last week that have been killed, black cops, that have been killed by black people. So just because they're cops, their lives don't matter? You, you know, you, you fucking idiots these days. I'll tell you what right now. This shit that I saw, look, because on the weekend, I take a break from the media. I turned on my podcast today, and I was listening to all my podcasts. This bullshit you fucking idiots are calling for, for defunding the police. Do you understand what kind of bullshit you're calling for? Right. Who the fuck is going to be there when someone breaks in your house? Who's going to be there when someone's raping your daughter? Who's going to be there when someone beats up your wife? The cops. But yeah, you're going to sit here and you're gonna tell me, oh, well, we're, we're just going to defund the police. You're fucking stupid. Because a lot of you morons that want to do this shit, live, you live in democratic cities. And I'll tell you what right now, the gun laws in your democratic cities, they don't mean shit. So how the fuck are you going to defend yourself? Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I totally you agree. You're stupid. Huh. So, you know, this whole, this whole Black Lives Matter shit is bullshit. And I'll tell you why it's bullshit. In Chicago, for the last seven years, Chicago is the murder capital of the fucking country. Wow. And it's black people killing black people. So where the hell is Black Lives Matter when it comes to that. See, because that's the thing. That's a that's a hypocrisy of that fucking movement. It's because black lives don't matter unless it's a white cop killing a black person. But if it's a black person killing a black person, oh well, you know. I, I I'm just I'm just gonna I'm just gonna turn a blind eye. Give me a fucking break. You're bu- you're you're all full of bullshit. You're a bunch of anarchist pricks that just wanna sit here and wanna cry about shit because you wanna be the victim. Because in America right now being the victim is cool. And and, and, that, and that's what it boils down to. That's all I see. I see this shit right now where you have fucking mayors, you have police chiefs getting on their knees, bowing down to black people, apologizing for their white privilege. What the fuck, what the fuck are we talking about? If you want white privilege, I'm going to tell you something right now. I, I noticed this the other day. If you want white privilege, why don't you look at the Democratic Party structure? So you have, you have definitely, you have like black senators, black mayors, black police chiefs, all this stuff, right? Okay, I get it, I get it. The Democratic Party is diverse. But check this out. I don't think anyone has seen this. Who the fuck right now is leading the Democratic Party? Two 